Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN. For the next 20 minutes, I'm going to take you through what RackN is and does and how we're uniquely positioned in the market. I'll bring some video down so you can actually see me talk uh, as I get, go through the slides. And uh, what I highly suggest if you're interested in the deep tech, there is a technical demo that shows these principles at work. Highly recommend you taking the time to watch that. Also, it's a companion for this video. RackN specializes in physical layer automation for the data center. We consider this to be the forgotten layer. People work with virtualization or containers. They don't really deal with how you bring up the physical layer, the servers, the switches, the storage infrastructure, uh, the networking components. All of those pieces and parts really have not had the level of automation or abstraction that RackN has been focused on bringing. And that's meant that data centers themselves have become very fragile and hard to manage. Our mission to solve this problem started over 10 years ago when we were at Dell in the early Hadoop, OpenStack, and cloud days where we found that every data center was different. And it was important for us to be able to bring a repeatable success pattern into those data centers. And what we did was we stepped back and we wanted to redesign data center operations from the bare metal layers up because we felt like if solving that problem, we could then apply better controls, automation process, and procedure from the bottom of that stack all the way to the top. And we've really done that and shown very good results. Uh, and that meant we didn't fix this with silos with duct tape and brought a whole bunch of tools together. We actually rethought how things needed to be integrated, how fast they needed to be moved, and how flexible the systems had to be to make this work. And that meant when we built our system, it had to be both legacy and new hardware. We couldn't stipulate that only new servers would work and only one type of server would work, or even from one vendor or another vendor. So it's a completely neutral multi-vendor platform and something that our customers find very important where they can bring in a new vendor into their mix and potentially negotiate better prices on hardware or just be able to use the gear they've already got lying on the floor while they bring in the new uh, capabilities and components that they want to use. For us, that means being able to go from day zero when a server is first rolled onto a floor and booted, but then to day two and beyond where we can ensure conformance and compliance and make sure our system is upgradable and can be rolled into a system so that you always know what's running on your data center and more importantly can fix, patch, and adapt what's going on in your data center as things change, both today and going into the future. And it's incredibly important to us. This isn't vaporware, this isn't our, our future roadmap. Things I'm talking about today are delivered technology in customer data centers. And that's important for us because people running data centers don't have time for, for things that might work. It's a production infrastructure, it needs to work today. So at the title of the, the deck, I talked about bootstrapping data centers for both the edge and the enterprise. And You'll see people talk quite a bit. I interview people for uh, our podcast, Latest Shiny, uh, about edge and enterprise. And there's a lot of, a lot of FUD um, around these topics. And people like to bucket enterprise and edge as different. Racken sees it very differently. Edge and enterprise really have the same basic footprints. They all want to use commodity hardware, similar application mixes with containerized workloads or virtualized workloads. They need to be zero touch. Uh, and they have to be a highly secure environment. So from our perspective and what we build, while there's some slight differences between edge and enterprise, the core of the platform is really the same and the needs are really the same. The feature sets are the same. So what does RackN do and, and where do we fit in the market? This is our view of the market. There's shared infrastructure, public cloud, which is a very dominant force. But around that, our customers are seeing edge infrastructure and dedicated infrastructure, either on premises or colo, it doesn't really matter from our perspective, but there's a constellation of, of infrastructure that they manage and control and that they put into shared infrastructure. RackN is all of the infrastructure that our customers manage themselves. That's really the hallmark of what RackN does. It provides a universal control plane so customers can run the infrastructure that they want to run. We do that not as a hybrid cloud management tool, but actually as a data center operations platform. Our, our focus is on multi-site management, not multi-cloud management. And the distinction is that we're not trying to manage an Amazon, a Google, uh, a Microsoft, 
uh, we're really working on places where there is just the infrastructure that the customers want to control without any cloud. That means that we are very friendly and enabling with hybrid platforms. So we're very excited to collaborate and work with tools like Terraform and provide APIs that make physical infrastructure cloud-like with all the check-in, check-out, give me a machine that you would expect to see out of a platform uh, that Terraform is, is plumbing against. Uh, that's in true for Ansible, it's true for uh, multi-cloud site management, it really doesn't matter. Those are really components that are baked into how we deliver the infrastructure. And it's always important for us to emphasize that we do this without being a SaaS or a managed service provider. Rackin is a software company. We, our software is operated by our customers behind their firewall without a Rackin engineer, without a Rackin VPN, without a network connection, without a SaaS. It is truly behind the firewall, classic enterprise software. Uh, and this is what we hear that our customers want. They want the control to be uh, in their hands for running a data center, for running their infrastructure. There's five key uh, things that our customers really ask for when they come uh, looking at our software. First is they want compliance and visibility for the infrastructure they have. And compliance might mean just knowing what you have installed, but more typically it's being able to make sure that the systems are in compliance, that the BIOS and RAID is set correctly, the operating systems are patched. Uh, critical, critical things for our customers to get control of, uh, and sadly is missing in most data centers. It has to be multi-vendor. Uh, that means operating system, hardware, they're, they're really, you know, we work within the infrastructure that the customers have and so that means that we don't care um, about which vendors people interact with, even things that we have overlaps with, uh, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Salt, uh, configuration tools, that's fine. Use the tools that are working for you. We want people to protect the investments that they've made. Agile security means being able to reprovision quickly. A lot of what we, we bring into our customer sites is the idea that they, haven't, they don't have a static infrastructure anymore. So you, instead of trying to patch a system into existence, we allow you to do a rolling upgrade where you actually reprovision everything back into a compliance, so an image-based deployment, very cloud-like behavior. Uh, that means you have to have strong zero-touch automation. It's a core component of what we deliver. And zero-touch automation doesn't mean anything if you can't, don't do that with integration into a system of record. So an IP allocation, a naming system, a configuration management database, uh, your security infrastructure, your, your user single sign-on, all of these things must be done as part of a provisioning operations. And we're going to talk about that. It's a real theme for our discussion here is to talk about how in important integration is into what you would think of as just normal data center operations. But before I go there, let me be very simple. Rackend delivers a fully functional cluster from nothing in just a few minutes. We don't care about the hardware, so we boot discover the hardware. If you have inventory files, we can start from those instead of first discovery. But from that discovery, we're gonna go through a deep inventory, a conformance check. We're gonna make sure the firmware is updated and patched. We're gonna install the operating system, set up the networking, and then start doing application integrations and lay down, either using tools that you already have, or you can do it completely within the rack end system. From there, we start integrating in all of the components where you're sharing information, you're bringing in the configuration, password security, all the pieces you need to actually build a fully functional system. And critically, not just a single system, but actually cluster managed. So our platform is able to take information that we've discovered about a system and then send it back into other systems to build clusters. That might mean adding machines into a vCenter cluster. It might mean sharing tokens so that nodes can join a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it really doesn't matter. It, this is part of actually connecting systems together, with something the Rackend platform does very well. And so that means we've been able to do an end-to-end -end automation where customers can go from having nothing to having a fully functional system in just a couple of minutes. And sadly, most people in industry, this takes weeks, sometimes months, to go from a system being delivered, it being integrated, even if they've had a systems integrator or a vendor who's pre-populated or pre-set up things. Uh, this, this, this process can take a lot of time, both because of having a lot of manual steps, but because of errors and troubleshooting and, and not getting it right the first time and having to figure out what happened and fix it. 
For a financial services customer that we have, uh, this looks very concretely like a rack being delivered. It could be any one of a number of vendors. When that machine is powered on, it goes through a completely automated process. There is no manual intervention. The systems are checked, verified, conformed with RAID and BIOS, CSX is installed, the networking topology is set up, the security credentials, the names, everything that's required, that is then injected into a system that uh, virtual, uses Virtual Cloud Foundation to finish the vCenter cluster in a total time of an hour. This isn't just a one-time thing. They actually lab test this infrastructure and continually tune and refine this process version after version, system after system. When you can do this in an hour, it changes the whole way you look at your data center. This isn't you know, a person running around with a USB drive. This is a person clicking a button and going to get lunch coming back and checking to make sure their cluster was configured correctly. Completely changes the game on how data center operations are, are performed. And what we see is that is really a different type of data center than we've ever had before. It's a continuously integrated data center. And we've been using this terminology. Uh, we think it's a really interesting way to look at data centers because it captures the idea that we have to integrate and do a day two operations right at the start. Right? Those are our objectives and targets. We've seen some other terms in the market um, for similar concepts, but we feel like they're too narrow or too closely defined to say a virtualization platform and not looking at the data center as a complete stack. For us, the CIDC goes all the way down to the BIOS and firmware of the system, the, the networking connections that are established and up into the, uh, the platforms and then ultimately the applications, all of which should be completely automated in a continuous software de defined way. Wow, that's a lot. Still haven't gotten into the tech, so let's dive into what the tech does and how the tech works. Um, this, is, this is really about a system that is not a single thing, but a modular platform, of course, multi-vendor, API-driven, very important to us, and can scale both from running in a switch or on a Raspberry Pi and a couple of machines into thousands of machines running in a data center. The essence of the system looks like this. Uh, it's a continuously integrated data center system uh, focused around an intent platform. So the intent platform is our digital rebar platform, uh, and that has its own infrastructure as code components. But the idea here is that in a CIDC system, you would have a pipeline. That pipeline would produce artifacts. The intent platform builds them into the infrastructure. This is effectively your cluster bring up. For us, that isn't just a one-time operation. If you change the artifacts, it changes the infrastructure. That's the idea of an intent-based platform. And building on top of that as the design creates really amazing potential for data center automation and control. Now, before I dive into what that looks like and, and some of our infrastructure as code capabilities, I just want to explain the system itself is a tiny Golang binary. Um, it's a single unit. There's no external database or dependencies. It's very small footprint. Uh, and that makes it very flexible from, from that infrastructure. Uh, it is entirely RESTful APIs and web sockets, so this doesn't require specialized tools or components. They're very easy to use. We are an API-first company, so everything that the platform does, it does through the API. Even the CLI or the UX are really just exercising that API. Uh, it is air-gap capable. Um, we talk about running on customers' premises behind the firewall. Uh, we have a lot of dedication in our designs that would actually allow you to run in a place where you can't talk to the internet at all and even retrieve information, let alone come out. Um, those are key design points for us. And part of that drives us being field extensible. So if you're in a situation and you need to patch a component for, for doing Dell firmware or HP firmware or a Kubernetes install script, each one of those pieces can be field extended and managed independently, so you're not patching the whole system. Now, of course, if you have to patch the system, we do support um, API-driven upgrades, and you can literally tell the system to upgrade itself. Uh, and then all of that is based on our integrated infrastructure as code. So one of the things that we had to do and have been refining over the last five years is how we actually package and deliver all these things in a safe, reliable way. Uh, when you look at the core of the intent-based system, the digital rebar uh, platform, it has to do bare metal provisioning. That's our core mandate. 
And from that perspective, it has to implement all of the protocols to do this. And this is really what makes provisioning hard from a physical infrastructure layer, because it's not just one thing. You have to be able to do DHCP and netbooting, which in itself is multiple protocols. You need agents on the systems, at least temporarily, so that you can do post configuration or uh, discovery actions and conformance. You have to have out of band control so that you can actually talk to the machine and, and use the vendor APIs or IPMI as necessary to take out of band actions. You have to be able to talk to a switch and configure a switch sometimes using its APIs since you can't actually put an agent on those switches. And of course, then you have to be able to provide a, a strong user experience around all those things. So just doing provisioning well requires a orchestration system that can combine multiple APIs and coordinate those behaviors. That's the, sort of the secret sauce of RackN is that our workflow and automation systems are able to span and control work across multiple APIs. But it, it's not enough to just do those for servers. What we're talking about from a data center automation platform means that we have to take actions across all of the platforms in a data center, not just the ones that RackN immediately controls. And so we've built a lot of integration points, a lot of integration extensions and capabilities into the platform so that when you're bringing up a system, it can go and get an IP address. It can register the name with a DNS infrastructure, it can tell the CMDB, the configuration manager and the inventory systems, hey, I have a system and it's set up like this. You can go to the authentication system, Active Directory, and get credentials or register a server. Doing zero touch automation requires that you integrate all of these steps together into an ongoing system. Because as soon as you change the system, you have to repeat all those steps. If you re-image a machine, you have to re-register it with the Active Directory to get credentials installed. The heart of digital rebar is provisioning, but also integration. You can't do one without the other. That's one of our biggest lessons learned. It's really what makes us very unique in the market. So to make all that stuff work, we have to be able to do con continuously integrated data centers with certain key attributes. We need source code management. That's a part of infrastructure as code, but it has to be modular. We have to be able to say, you can't install this piece without the other pieces in place. You have to know if something's gonna break if you're missing a dependency. Uh, because modularity requires you to be able to do that. All of that means that you want to be able to come back and have a catalog and say, oh, I don't need to reinvent how to install Kubernetes. I should be able to just pull that in from a catalog or interface into another system. Those are That means that we have to have a catalog of capabilities. And that catalog needs to have open components where people can see the code and extend it and, and work with it. Closed components because people don't want to share things that they've had to do in their data center. Closed is important and, and customer facing things that Racken has built that we sell and part of our monetization strategy. So all those things together mean that our digital rebar platform can take infrastructure of code components from our catalog and they're at different layers. So for example, uh, you could go into our catalog, pick different hardware pieces, different operating system pieces and different platform pieces combine those together into a workflow and come out with a, a cluster. In this illustration, a Dell cluster running VMware and Kubernetes on top. All perfectly reasonable uh, things that exist in our catalog as usable components. And then you could actually pick different things from the components, create a new workflow and press that through the intent system to get a different cluster. And because of the way the system works and its efficiency, you can go from having one type of cluster to a new type of cluster in just a couple of minutes in a completely automated way. Totally changes the, the framework here. You can also take the same cluster you have and patch it, change it, and, and just update its version. And we do support concepts like blue-green deployments and rolling upgrades and things like that, that where you want more control. This is obviously a simplification. And it's always important to note that in doing that process, it's not just pulling things out of the rack and catalog and delivering them. It actually comes back to integrating into your other systems, right? Whether it's talking to your wide area networking, updating your systems of record, dealing with your configuration, or telling your monitoring system, I've taken something offline and changed its intent, and you have to update your profiles. As always, the integration is a key aspect of being able to deliver these zero touch experiences, because without the integrations, you're back to systems being broken or requiring manual intervention. So that's the sort of infrastructure as code concepts to deliver an individual working site in a completely autonomous way. But that's not sufficient. 
our customers and our prospects demand distributed data center multi-site management because they don't just operate one infrastructure. And Edge is thousands in, in just a regular data center. You're talking about a global distribution of data centers that people want to be operated in the same way. You want consistent operational practices across all of your fleet of infrastructure. Could also be that you put a digital rebar platform in the top of, in the switch at the top of every rack and manage that as a distributed data center and then have a aggregation point for the physical facility that allows you to have each rack be completely independently operated so you eliminate false zones. All perfectly reasonable. When we talk about multi-site management, it's very important to us that multi-site management is not a different tool, it's not a different application. It's literally digital rebar platform with management capabilities added, which means that the whole system has the same APIs, has the same consistent look and feel, uh, and it has a lot of the same uh, federated capabilities, meaning there is no need for a central system that then stars out to every other component. Digital Rebar is designed to have autonomous operation at every site. When things roll together, having those, those aggregation points doesn't mean that the other sites are now unable to operate without the aggregation. It's completely federated mesh style management control systems. And this relies very heavily on our integrated infrastructure as code pieces. The modularity, the atomicity, and idempotency of those units are key to being able to deliver the system the way we've, we've implemented. This is patent pending technology. We're very excited about it. Um, it's a very novel approach to how data center operations are managed in a distributed way. So looking at the system visually, uh, this would be um, an implementation in which you have uh, globally distributed data centers. Uh, in this case, US, uh, Europe, and Argentina. In those cases, you still have your master catalog where, where things have been defined. And sets of catalog information are, are bundled together and then sent to each uh, endpoint, digital rebar endpoint, as a control unit. As upgrades and patches are made, those are passed into the endpoint as a new version set. That can be done in a synchronized manner. It can be done on a bootstrapping perspective. And in this, in this model, literally the, ma the master endpoint is able to then synchronize changes globally in the system. Uh, you'll see in the demo, we actually conform systems. So if somebody starts making changes, the conformance process will actually undo those changes and revert them back to the known good state. In this model, that's configuration being pushed to the endpoints. Control from the endpoints uh, has, to be has to be maintained at a local level first. That allows automation to run and provide information to the system. It also allows the local sites to operate autonomously if something changes. We then allow regional control without compromising local. Because of the way we handle proxy forwarding control, a change made at the, at the regional level against a mirrored copy of the data actually refers changes up into the local system. Any changes made anywhere else in the system are then forwarded back through the transactional system and synchronized across all mirrors. Sounds like a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of technology that went into making all this, these pieces and parts work. But needless to say, we avoid the multi-master problem. There is only a single source of truth. And when things change, we, we distribute read-only copies for the regional control to, to operate. What that means is that we can actually have uh, managers that connect to managers so you can aggregate multiple tiers of management and ultimately build a single pane of glass. The system doesn't require you to have a strict hierarchy. You could have multiple single pane of glass. So if you have multiple control centers and you wanted to have them of redundant views, you can have two master controls in completely different areas that are aggregating up. You can create HA pairs using this technology so that the two sides, two systems are synchronizing each other. You can even have a single unit that you use to bootstrap in an air-gapped environment where you create a manager and the manager is in itself its own system receiving an update. Um, this is incredibly powerful technology, purpose-built for this type of distributed management control system. The financial services customer that I mentioned earlier for, with a single site is actually using this technology in production today for global deployments. So they define their VMware bootstrapping process as a version set. That version set is distributed into a globally 
uh, regional end to a regional endpoint, and then that allows that endpoint without on-site expertise to bootstrap and run the entire vCenter bring up experience. And I want to explain this a little bit. Here's what happens. Customer brings up a version, doesn't have to be current, of digital rebar in their data center. They then attach that, then they boot the servers and walk away. In New York, where the system is, is managed, they connect the manager into that remote site. It automatically synchronizes to bring the system up to current version. Once it's up to current version, the systems will recognize and automatically start the conversion process. So in this case, it doesn't matter what operation, as soon as the system is ready, it's going to start the process and you'll get an ESX cluster in an hour. This means that the global footprint of the system is all similar. It's all conformed is managed in a pipeline staged way so they can dev, test, stage, and roll out changes across the globe. And they don't need to have hands-on people doing ESX install or cluster installs at all. They can reliably automate the entire process in a global manner from a single location with a proven, tested workflow. It's a lot. A lot of deep technology, and, and we do have a hands-on, we do have a demo that sort of shows how all these pieces work. Uh, I encourage you to take a look and watch the technology. I'm sure that, that this sort of taste of what we can do has given you a whole bunch of more questions. We're happy to entertain those. I do want to step back for a second and tell you about our commercial model. Uh, the system has two primary components. It has a platform, which is what RackN, which is what RackN delivers and licenses. Uh, that is a proprietary platform. Uh, that is the implementation of the digital rebar APIs and we have enterprise extensions like single sign-on, multi-site, uh, role-based authentication, some new context features, there's a lot of powerful capabilities built into that platform. And on top of that platform, we have an open ecosystem, uh, which is the digital rebar community. In that community, the content packs, plugins, extensions, hardware interfaces, really all the integrations run in that, or in that infrastructure so that our customers can actually use, expand, and see what's going on in that, in that platform. Uh, and so it's an open ecosystem on a proprietary platform. The system itself is offered in multiple tiers. Uh, we do have a very powerful freemium model for up to 20 machines. That freemium has access to the full catalog. We don't hold anything back uh, from that, that system. So you can take the 20 machine process and play with everything that we have available in the catalog. Uh, and then most of our customers move into the enterprise tier. Uh, these prices are per unit, no scale. So if you bought one machine, if you would, um, physical machine. Uh, at the enterprise scale, you're getting everything in the catalog and all the features of the platform. We do disable those for pro users, uh, and then some customers who are only doing, I say, a cobbler replacement want to turn off all of the advanced features, including plugins and hardware support and things like that. We do have a model for those users who are looking for a very narrow um, provision only use case. If you look at us more broadly in the market, um, there are a couple of things that, that we will displace in the market. Uh, we definitely uh, completely overlap and replace things like Cobbler, Foreman, uh, Maz, or Ironic, where people are just looking for a provisioner. Um, provisioning is really just a small piece of this story, uh, for, but if you're, if you're doing provisioning, we do offer um, a very nice migration, especially from something like a Cobbler or a Foreman, where it's very template-focused. Um, you can drop in Digital Rebar very easily and, and migrate your systems to that to a supported, really robust API-driven platform. Uh, we do also displace uh, the vendor-based, single vendor-based management systems. We use their APIs and tooling uh, and protocols. We just, you don't need to use like a UCS director if you're using RackN. We provide much deeper workflow control that's multi-vendor um, and provides some, some more complete integrations or different integrations, I guess, uh, if you're looking at UCS uh, director. Uh, and then we, we can do a lot of things that like a Terraform or an Ansible can do. We also have amazing integrations with those platforms. So if you have great working infrastructure as code, we will embrace and extend. And that is a very, very powerful way to use these systems together. 
or if you wanted to be able to take some operations, in a lot of cases, we can completely automate a process end to end, and it's your choice as to where you want to draw those lines. That's fine with us. Um, we understand uh, that people have good working automation, and if you have good working automation, use it, please. So let me let me summarize for you what we've what we've gone through. RackN has delivered groundbreaking zero touch continuously integrated data center. Each data center can be completely autonomous uh, using our infrastructure's code system can bring up and manage its own infrastructure in a, in a completely auto autonomous way. We've combined that by extending the system to be able to do multi-site federation. So you can take those same endpoints, that same API, that same control logic, and move it up a level so that you can manage your data centers as a single pane of glass or with regional control or to create different uh, control zones and tiers based on your infrastructure needs. And we have a robust infrastructure's code catalog so that people using our system start with a tremendous amount of capabilities baked into the system. You can click a button and download support for pretty much every operating system on every architecture, um, a huge number of platforms and capabilities and hardware vendors baked right into the system and that catalog is growing every day. All those things together create a unique combination with RackN where you actually get full data center control and automation from that bare metal level all the way up. And that's why RackN is really a unique vendor in the market. We've rethought how data centers should be operated so that you can fix the foundations of your data center from the bare metal and then build strong, robust, automated infrastructure on top of that. Hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have questions, please reach out to us at rackn.com or take a self-trial. Use the product yourself. We, we love to let the product speak for itself. If you go to rebar.digital, you can join the community and be part of that experience yourself. Um, and we really like to work with people and, and talk about operations and figure out how we can help you take your operations that you have non-disruptively make it into something that you can carry into the 2020. Thank you.